World War II, the most costly and destructive war in modern history. It is estimated that 89 to 108 million people died, either in the war or the results from it. Following the defeat of Germany and the Central Powers, the Treaty of Versailles imposed punitive war reparations, primarily on Germany, to repay the Allies for the damage done during the war. German resentment for the war reparations, hyperinflation in the 1920s, and the collapse of the German economy in the Great Depression led to the collapse of the German Republic and the rise of Nazism in 1933. During this time, Germany rapidly rearmed and rebuilt their military strength. A policy of appeasement to a rising Germany in exchange for peace led by Britain emboldened the ambitions of the Nazis. In 1931, the Empire of Japan invaded Manchuria. In 1935, Britain signed the Anglo-German Naval Agreement, allowing Germany to rebuild its navy beyond the terms agreed to in the Treaty of Versailles. Also in 1935, Italy, under the leadership of Prime Minister Benito Mussolini, invaded Ethiopia. According to the Treaty of Versailles, a demilitarized buffer zone was established in the German Rhineland between Germany and France. In 1936, Germany reoccupied the Rhineland with troops. Britain and France protested, but took no action. In 1938, the Austrian Nazi Party fomented unrest in the Republic of Austria. The Austrian government jailed the leaders of the Nazi Party. Hitler threatened a German military invasion of Austria unless the Nazis were allowed a place in the government. The Austrian Chancellor eventually resigned, and the new Chancellor requested German troops to restore order. On March 12, 1938, German forces entered Austria, and the nation came under the control of Germany. Germany then amassed 750,000 troops to the border between Germany and Czechoslovakia to demand German autonomy in the Sudetenland in western Czechoslovakia. On September 15, 1938, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain met with Hitler in Munich. Chamberlain felt that refusal to appease German demands would lead to war. Hitler and Chamberlain signed the Munich Agreement, forcing Czechoslovakia to cede the Sudetenland to Germany in exchange for peace. This led to the collapse of the Czech government. And on March 15, 1939, Germany occupied most of the rest of Czechoslovakia. On March 20, 1939, Germany sent an ultimatum to Lithuania, demanding they cede territory in the Klaipeda region over to Germany, or Lithuania would be invaded. On March 22nd, Lithuania signed a treaty with Germany agreeing to cede over the territory. In 1940, Lithuania was annexed by the Soviet Union. On September 1, 1939, Germany invaded Poland. Britain and France declared war on Germany on September 3rd. On September 17th, the Soviet Union invaded Poland from the east. On April 9th, 1940, Germany occupied Denmark and invaded Norway. The Second World War had begun. This is London. You will now hear a statement by the Prime Minister. I am speaking to you from the Cabinet Room at 10 Downing Street. This morning, 
the British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note stating that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. You can imagine what a bitter blow it is to me that all my long struggle to win peace has failed. Yet I cannot believe that there is anything more or anything different that I could have done and that would have been more successful. Up to the very last, it would have been quite possible to have arranged a peaceful and honourable settlement between Germany and Poland. But Hitler would not have it. He had evidently made up his mind to attack Poland whatever happened. And although he now says he put forward reasonable proposals which were rejected by the Poles, that is not a true statement. The proposals were never shown to the Poles, nor to us. And though they were announced in the German broadcast on Thursday night, Hitler did not wait to hear comments on them, but ordered his troops to cross the Polish frontier the next morning. His action shows convincingly that there is no chance of expecting that this man will ever give up his practice of using force to gain his will. He can only be stopped by force. And we and France are today in fulfillment of our obligations, going to the aid of Poland, who is so bravely resisting this wicked and unprovoked attack upon her people. We have a clear conscience. We have done all that any country could do to establish peace. But a situation in which no word given by Germany's ruler could be trusted and no people or country could feel itself safe had become intolerable. And now that we have resolved to finish it, I know that you will all play your part with calmness and courage. At such a moment as this, the assurances of support which we have received from the Empire are a source of profound encouragement to us. When I finish speaking, certain detailed announcements will be made on behalf of the government. Give these your close attention. The government have made plans. This is London. The government have given instructions for the following important announcements. Closing of places of entertainment. All cinemas, theatres and other places of entertainment are to be closed immediately until further notice. In the light of experience, it may be possible to allow the reopening of such places in some areas. They are being closed because if they were hit by a bomb, large numbers would be killed or injured. Sports gatherings and all gatherings for purposes of entertainment and amusement, whether outdoor or indoor, which involve large numbers congregating together, are prohibited until further notice. This refers especially to gatherings for purposes of entertainment. But people are earnestly requested not to crowd together unnecessarily in any circumstances. Churches and other places of public worship will not be closed.
And now, give ear unto the Lord, O ye nations which trouble the world with wars, and understand that it is for this cause also that I have suffered you to involve yourselves in a far-spread conflict of blood, and also that the words of the prophets might be fulfilled, and have not restrained your greed and vainglory, as I have been wont to do, for the sake of the innocent among you. Wherefore you sounded the trump of war, and it summoned the vultures to feed on the flesh of your sons. And now they circle the heavens over the heaps of your dead, that they may glut themselves on the carcasses of the slain. And the rivers of the valleys you have turned into blood. You have devised the murder of innocents under the sea, that sharks may devour the tender child. And the great deep swallow up a host. Your inventors have perverted the gift of God to build your crafts of war, even for the very clouds of heaven, that you might rain your thunderbolts of death upon the heads of the innocent, to take away the life which has given no offense, that you might horrify the world with cruelty and thus constrain the nations to give you victory. Woe unto him that pursueth victory at any price, and also unto him that pursueth peace at any price. And let this be your Lord's answer concerning your disputations, that you pursue justice at any price, when it is yours to do, and if wisdom should justify, that you temper it with mercy. For I will uphold the just man and the just nation, saith the Lord and together the cruel-hearted and the faint-hearted will I condemn. And as for the nation that slays the innocent out of the heavens, and defiles the great waters with the blood of murder, I will remember them, saith the Lord, for I will shut up the heavens against them from above, and open the gates of hell upon them from beneath. I will cut off the blessings of heaven from them, and the sea shall be the sepulture of their strength. Their pride and their glory shall go down together into the deep, and it shall be their everlasting tomb. Wilt thou altogether usurp God's place, that thou mayest govern the earth and the sea and also the heavens unto the shedding of blood? Shall the Lord not avenge murder? Who art thou, O man, that sitteth to judge life and death? Shall the Creator who gave life, and who only hath wisdom and knowledge to take it, leave it unto babes? Or wilt thou unto whom hast been given a seat of authority among men, intrude within the very courts of heaven also, where God reigneth? Hear now the word of the Lord. He that decreeth the death of innocence shall perish from off his throne and from the earth also shall he be banished away. Shall a man who is himself but flesh and blood make his throne a pool of blood and give no answer? When the justice of God must answer to the slain, whose blood crieth from the ground? From the beginning thou hast known that man was created in the image of God. Thou hast known also that his law went forth from Sinai by the hand of Moses, that thou shouldst not kill. And unto this end also there went forth a decree from the days of Noah, that whoso sheddeth the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. And under this law cometh self-defense, both for nations and for individuals to preserve the rights of man and the life of nations. Wherefore, in self-defense will I justify the shedding of blood. More than this thou hast no law, and thou committest murder, and a murderer shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Hear therefore all ye oppressive rulers, and all ye unjust sovereigns who have done these things. Hear the voice of the Almighty One, whose throne is above the heavens, and who maketh the earth his footstool. 
Ye are as the chaff from the summer's threshing, and with a faint breeze will I blow you away. Tell you and your thrones and they that uphold you shall be found no more at all. While in the hurricane of mine anger some shall forever disappear from before the face of the righteous over whom they have ruled. Ye call upon God, and with a noise you herald that God is with you. Behold, I will break in pieces the scepter and silence the tongue of him who would tempt the Lord that he might gain the vassalage of men for the glory of empire. He that buildeth for war, seeketh war, and sueth for the spirit of war, shall he not have war? And he that would kill with the sword, shall he not perish by the sword also? O thou boasting nation, I am against you. When you sue for peace, I will not hear. And when you groan with the distress of battle, I will be far away. Should not the despoiler be despoiled? Answer thou me, and are the spoils of conquest good, that they should be blessed of him upon whose name you call? Shall a king also despise covenants, and a whole people become treacherous? Who is able to evade responsibility with God by feigned words? Is the Lord dull of understanding? And will you call upon him to confirm the wrong, that through his name you may gain advantage in your works of darkness? Ye are hypocrites. Ye speak boastfully and deceitfully, saying, Look at the progress of our arms, and our mighty strength in battle. Can you not see that God is with us? Yet you know that it is not might that makes right. I am against you, O thou boasting nation. I am against the proud and the deceitful, and against the murderer that goeth into battle, and against the despoiler, and against the covetous, who seek that which is not their own, who first make war, and then would tax the burdens thereof upon their adversary, in order to reap the spoils of war. And thus they justify the robbery of nations which are weaker than themselves, and are restrained only by the censure of the world. Yet a little while, and thou shalt know that I am against thee. For those whom thou spoilest shall return and spoil thee, and in thine own land shall desolations come. Thou shalt sue for peace, but thine adversaries will not consider even as thou hast not considered. Behold, thou shalt return to the controversy which lieth in the sword. Will ye be hot when ye will, and cold when ye will? And is all option centered in thee? And hath thine adversary not to say or to judge? Canst thou make war and make peace at thine own will? Thou thyself hast chosen the adjudication of blood. Wherefore now behold, they have also chosen blood, that thou mayest learn wisdom. Yet have I made thee a military scourge unto the transgressing nations, and have turned the strength and the vanity of thy sword against them. And thou shalt overrun other lands and other countries. But after thine adversaries have humbled themselves, and repented them of their failings in the conduct of government, and of their unjust advantage in the commerce of the world, expanding by forcible means or overbearing methods, and of class distinctions, with all its vanities of title and its inequalities of birth, then will I hedge thee in, saith the Lord, and thou and those that are with thee shall be brought down, but if the transgressing nations will not repent, and put away these evil things, saith the Lord of hosts, I will raise up my forces in the midst of them, and overthrow them. I created the great fish to live in the depths of the sea, and I provided also that they should feed and nourish upon the lesser. 
Shall this law, which is for the dumb creatures of the deep, be a law unto man also? Him whom I have made in the image of God, both in the similitude of the body and in the attributes of the soul. Behold, I say unto you, that the greed of nations, that which is beyond justice and fairness, as of individuals, I the Lord detest. Wherefore, it shall come to pass that those which remain upon the earth to occupy it and to dwell upon it shall live as becometh the children of God. In my hand from henceforth will I hang the plummet, and the wall shall be to the line. Now, O ye wicked, hear ye the word of the Lord. No longer shall the wicked prosper. It is the set time, whether of nations or of individuals, it is the same. My retributions shall overtake the man of secret intrigues and the nation of disturbing policies, saith the Lord. Who infringe this my law of justice unto all men? And every creature and every nation must meet again the folly of their ways. And this law is in force upon all nations and peoples, and from henceforth my judgments shall be swift upon them, saith the Lord of hosts. They shall not linger as hitherto. The unjust prince will I bring down, and the wicked ruler will I punish. Meddlesome nations will I destroy, and class governments will I overturn, saith the Lord, except they repent. For I would that you should know the will of the Father, that in each nation there shall be established an equality of rights and privileges, and all those who oppose this divine principle are against me, saith the Lord, and from henceforth I am against them. A country that is select and beautiful, a land that I have set my seal upon, will I also rend, saith the Lord. And a little one shall set it upon edge endwise. Call now your watchmen to the tower, and keep a vigil upon the Lord, that you may know that I will do it. And the city in the border, which is the center thereof, will I pluck up, saith the Lord. And I will scatter the workmen of that city, and the banner thereof will I tear in pieces. And out of the sea the monsters of the deep shall rise up, and they shall send forth desolations as a flood upon that land. And I will bring clouds of dense darkness, and overcast them with the red glare of war. And they shall hang over that land, and the fear of the Lord shall seize the hearts of that people. For lo, the red and the black shall be against her, and their gathering hosts will crowd upon the plain, and blood shall wash away the filth and the wickedness of that land. For I will shake her center, saith the Lord, and her poles of liberty shall be riven as with the lightning. For her ways are corrupted before me, the path of peace is no longer found in her borders, and her statue of justice is broken down. Her honorable men have done it. Her judges connive with men of true devices and are full of pandering. Her halls of legislation are corrupted with bribery, and the people of that land seek to conceal away the lawless. Everywhere is heard the voice of them that cried, Release unto us Barabbas. The statutes of the law they will not suffer to be enforced, but esteem it worthy to shield the guilty. And the crafty defense of the murderer is rewarded with honor, for the evil technicalities of the law are turned to the profit and the glory of professional men, while they who shed the blood of innocence go free. 
Her forces of law and order are become conspirators in crime, and her criminals are fast multiplying in the highways of her notable cities. Thus the land is filled with violence, and there is no safety. Shall such a people govern? Where is the peaceful dwelling place of your fathers? The place of safety for my little ones? that they may not grow up corrupted. Answer thou me, shall such a people govern? And shall these things continue, till there are none righteous among them that are left to dwell upon the earth, even as it was in the days of Noah? Is it not well that I have numbered your days to make an end of them? Answer me in this also, saith the Lord. And ye boast of liberty. Has not that liberty which your fathers obtained in blood become a delusion and a sham? Hear now the Lord. You grind the face of the poor, and for the toiler, the producer of all your material wealth, you have no mercy. You would yoke him as a beast of burden, the widow and the orphan, where is your provision for them? Your shrewd men rob them, and you leave them alone to perish. Also the feeble and the aged, show me the providing statute. Only the criminal do you house and feed, and all my little ones must suffer. The strong ones who make the law make it unto themselves while the helpless perish under their care. And will you call this liberty? I will you celebrate it, forgetful of your oppressions? Behold, is not bondage the name thereof? Do they enjoy liberty whom you grind down, and in your greed ride upon their necks? Is there any liberty at all, when there is not liberty for all? Or is it liberty that you possess a franchise of sovereign power to return corrupt men to office, who rule in unrighteousness and continually crush the weak underfoot. Hear now the Lord speak. I will drive you from the seat of authority. There shall not a corrupt man be left to rob and to plunder my people, saith the Lord. Yea, and I will break down the strong pillars of your constitution, except you remember the helpless, to set my people free. For the Lord will make bare his strong right arm, and he himself will be their emancipator. My statutes, which are the laws of the land when they are righteous, shall be made strong for the right, and for discipline also, saith the Lord and the pernicious law shall be erased from the statute book. And I will double all your penalties for crime, and the murderer shall answer with his blood, and no man shall escape, saith the Lord. Ye know that it is written that the Lord cannot endure the least degree of iniquity. Why then will you nurse it, and mother the lawless as a suckling child, as if you did the world a service, Will you comfort and protect the criminal, that they may leave in my people with the spirit of crime? And will you call it charity and an acceptable service to God? Behold, in mine indignation I will require an eye for an eye. Yea, presently I will require both eyes of the wicked of this generation, for it is the hour of my coming, and ye are not able to abide the law of Christ but rather the law of Moses. And this will I do, that darkness may settle down upon the souls of them that violate the innocent, and defy the law of God, and the law of man, until I have stamped them out as fire from beneath thy feet. And I will bring strong men, and plant them in all the high places of that land. Yea, men wondered at, saith the Lord, and they shall not fear, and my statutes and my judgments will they perform. 
and the land shall be cleansed. Stand by now, ye fair nation, and ye corrupt generation. Stand by and see that I will do it, saith the Lord of hosts. The drone that is laden with riches will I cut off. He shall not be left to cumber the earth. For the land shall be a hive, and my people shall swarm as the bees. I will plant the honeysuckle, and the flowery field, and the land shall increase its yield fourfold, saith the Lord. And it shall flow with milk and with honey, and with a fine vintage. And there shall be enough for all. And I will make labor a pleasure and a joy. And peace shall be established in all the borders of that land. And there will I build my tabernacle, saith the Lord of hosts. And with the multitude of her towers will I light the firmament of heaven. And in splendor will I exalt her domes to meet the radiant morning of the millennial day. And then will appear the golden age, of which the prophets sang, and which their eyes have longed to see. And the songs of my redeemed will mingle with the prophet's voice. And together will they sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. And then will the Zion of my bosom return to fill the vacant place, and the new Jerusalem arise, and shake herself from the dust of the earth. And together will they sing the praises of their redeeming Lord and hosannas to their triumphant King. And the shouts of their joyful hallelujahs will rend the skies and resound upon the earth again and yet again. For then will be brought to pass the covenant of the Father, which he made with Enoch, that the earth should rest for a thousand years. And unto thee, thou greatly favored, unto thee I the Lord at this time have a word of warning and a word of sharp rebuke. The ear of the Almighty hath heard your slandering, and your backbiting, and your lying, and they are of that blackness which cometh from the depths of hell. Yea, they are of the spirit of that wicked one, who maketh war upon me and who hath gendered strife and bitterness and hatred in the hearts of my people from the first, for which cause Zion was lost unto them. Take heed, therefore, for I will rebuke my people suddenly with the shaft of death. I will make bare mine arm in the midst of them, and they shall know that I am God. And now, even now, will I make them to understand that of old it was truly said, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own city, and with his own people. From whence came the stones that killed the prophets? Were they from the highways of the Gentiles, or yet from the gates of Jerusalem? Were they not the gallstones of the bitterness of Israel? And Israel's stony heart, which their sins had petrified, and were they not gathered out from the dead sea of a spiritual kingdom? Behold, now from the putrid waters I still smell a detestable odor, and who that hath scented the shores of the two seas can distinguish? Will you cast me out, saith the Lord, and will you abandon me as a thing to be hated? Hear now the Lord speak. With a man will I rebuke a great nation, and with my rod will I punish a holy people. For a rod indeed have I brought forth out of the stem of Jesse. Yea, like unto a sword with two sharp edges have I brought it forth, saith the Lord. Can you remember when I would not punish Israel? I will search out the backbiter, and the slanderer will I hunt down in the midst of you. And I will hate you who have hated me, and cast you out who have cast me out, except ye repent, saith the Lord. Behold, ye know that my coming is at the door, and ye look for a prophet. Verily I say unto you, 
at the door of the tabernacle of Zion have I laid a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Will you bring into her gates the blindness that fell upon Judah? You have brought an evil report. One has lied against me, and a whole company have believed the lie. You have been tale-bearers against me, yea, from a distance and from afar off. You have borne a false witness against me. From the north you have lied, and out of the earth you have lied. Even out of the very ground you have lied against me, saith the Lord. Lo, these many years you have lied. Yet I would not speak, I did not answer. I would not suffer my silence to be broken, that my people might fill up their cup to the full, that I might deal with them, saith the Lord, and that after that I might once again renew unto them the word of the Lord, and bless them, saith the Lord of hosts. And hearken now unto me, O ye my scattered Israel, O ye my church in the wilderness, Hearken and break off, and remember the prophets no more. Neither the apostles of the Lamb, for they which garnished the sepultures of the dead, were they which slew them. Turn ye from the tombs of the seers to the living seers. Ye are fast bound in the stalks of ancient Israel. Break away, O ye my people. Arise, Shake off the faith that is dead. Is not a faith dead that looketh only to the dead prophets? Know ye not that a living faith can see the living? Arise, therefore, and shake off the withered leaves that linger on the ancient tree of Israel. Let me hurl them, saith the Lord, with a mighty wind, till all the branches of Jacob are clean bare. And then will the buds of a living spring burst forth into everlasting summer. And thou, O Zion, knowest thou who hath tempted thee to set thee against me, that my work should falter, and that my word should be cut off. Call now a solemn assembly, ye that know the Lord. Appoint a day of fasting, and a day of prayer. Bow down, O Zion, and make thee a covering of sackcloth, that mine eye may be turned from thy nakedness, that thou mayest quiet the indignation. It shall be unto thee a day of choosing, and not a day of counsel, saith the Lord. Wherefore, it is needful that ye seek unto me, that it may become a day of prayer. Amen.